So the purpose of the exercise is to try to move forward without actually trying to take out the enemies. So not actually returning fire, just trying to move without getting killed from cover to cover. And to recognize the difference between direct fire and indirect fire. Uh, when you are actually under fire or when there's like just fire in the air. Alright, so uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Obviously we might get shot down fairly easily, but uh, we're just going to walk or like do a jog forward and then when we take fire I want you to move to your closest possible cover and then duck down behind it like properly get down behind it like this so that you're totally out of sight and then stay there for maybe 10 seconds and try to locate like another cover from this position where can I move to next is there any other good covers where I might get a better firing position because obviously now you can see that I have those trees to my front uh, also I'm like kinda lying uphill so I can't really see what's going on beyond this hill so could I potentially uh, do like a crouch sprint up that way to get to those rocks could I uh, maybe use those trees up ahead as cover combined with the rocks up there and I would be further up the hill so maybe I can see what's going on beyond the hill also we have the bushes down there maybe that's a good position or the hill is going down this way maybe I can do like a long flank around and get down below that hill and potentially get better cover and a better view what's going on like beyond this hill okay so uh, mm -hmm. that's sort of the thought process, like where can I be the most used to my team? Uh, of course this has to be taken into account alongside what is the rest of my team doing? Where is the rest of my team going? What's my closest ally? What happens if I go down? So you have to take that into consideration as well, like not go too rogue. I know that I do that a lot because I play very aggressively compared to well the overall offensiveness of our team so sometimes I end up like way ahead but hopefully with this exercise we can uh, get a better feel for moving under fire so I guess we just try to move up and see if we can set off the enemy Right. Also always keep like a lookout for potentially good positions when you're just moving towards the objective because you never know when you're going to come under fire so uh, always assume that you're going to come under fire in the next few seconds and then, uh, actually, Netscape, can you uh, put them? Oh, that's probably not going to be good because then the area is going to come under attack. Uh, yeah. That. Yes. Yeah. Now we're going to know where they are, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I think for the purpose of this exercise, we're not going to actually fire back at them. We're just going to try to stay alive and move forward. So the yellow circle that I marked there, can you move them over there? Two or three, okay. Yeah, all right. And they're in position now, right? I think I see them. Ah, 
Uh, they might not notice this at all, because the stealth in this gameplay does actually work fairly well. But seeing as we're walking upright, there's a fairly decent chance they'll spot us. Maybe not. Okay, just um, be ready to take fire in our rolls and be ready to move to close cover. Okay, so you notice we haven't taken fire yet because they haven't actually uh, found out where they are being shot from. So I'm just going to stand up and fire until I take fire. There we go. Now they have located us. You see there's not a lot of fire going on. So It's not very accurate. It's not on us. It's just general return fire. So yeah. we can probably safely move. Yeah. Now I'm going to move over here, because that gives me better view. I'm going to move some of the closest bushes from my line of sight. And again, there's not a lot of fire going on, as you can tell. And it's not, the fire that was coming is not very accurate, so we can safely move pretty aggressively right now. Pretty much dead on the enemy, because we're not taking direct fire. And as long as you don't see an enemy explicitly, you can move pretty safely. Actually, I think... Uh, actually, re let's reset the exercise. This, I guess the initial one set sort of an example, but Netscap, I think we should um, keep them... Uh, mm -hmm. give them freedom of movement and uh, stance. So let's not force them in prone because that kind of ruins it for yeah, their know, uh, yeah. but it's uh, I'm not familiar with Zeus <laughs> no but uh, an important part of what, how the enemy spots us as well is that they are on the move and that they um, swap between the stances because obviously you're going to see a lot more when you're standing up, but you're also going to be more exposed. Okay, I put some new ones down. All right. Yep, all right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to walk with our guns up like this, or like a slow jog thing. And then, uh, when I say go, I want you to start firing in their general direction rolls, and do not stop firing until they return fire. You don't necessarily have to hit them. Actually, it's preferable that you don't, so that we can keep this exercise going. But um, just keep firing in their general direction until you take return fire. Okay. You want me to stay here? Okay, so let's you start. Want no, like, like right. move forward, and then right. when I say go, you go right. down into a crouch and start firing in their, pos All like, right. on their position. Okay. Okay, let's move and go. You see them. This AI somehow seems dumber than 
Yeah. The yeah. regular. <laughs> Can we set up the skill of those AI? Uh, if you uh, just double click on them and bring up the menu and set the skill to max. Or if you have like a full unit thing, you can just uh, hit the crystal above their heads and uh, I think you can set the... Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, like. skill is max. Alright. Well, I don't see them. Maybe they ran off in terror. Well, he's lying down. But again, they don't realize where we're at. No, oh, they are... Oh, he's on the move. He might... No, they're not. Okay, try to keep firing a bit and... Uh, but do it at a slower rate. Just keep some firing going in the air. So I think one of them now figured out our direction. But, again, they're not really sure where we are. There we go. Now they have sort of an idea. But if you just try to stay completely... You see, they're not actually very accurate right now because I don't think they're sure exactly where we are. You seem to have sort of an idea on Netscape now. You see the fire is mostly centered around him. So, if you and I now try to sprint forward, I think mostly... Yeah, you see Netscape is taking all of the fire. Mm -hmm. Because he's mm -hmm. the center of the enemy attention right now. So we are able to move really easily forward and gain ground and we're going to be in a much stronger position to take them out as long as Netscape stays alive so that's one of the tactics is to yeah. have like dual yeah. fire teams where one fire team takes all the attention and the other fire team pushes hard and basically storms the enemy See, even now, when I'm moving fairly in the open, I can see some of the enemies, but they aren't focusing on me right now. And now they've spotted me, so I have to move into cover. And you don't ne necessarily need to get all the way to the stone. Like, now I'm lying about 5 meters behind it, but I'm still in cover. So even if you run out of stamina, you can get in cover fairly quickly if you have if you see some cover up ahead that can break the enemy line of sight. And now we are basically right on top of them and in a much stronger position to yeah. take them out. With solid cover and well, lower range, which will increase our chances. Yeah, good one. Yeah. But again, the... Um, and, I mean, in actual combat, it's going to be a lot more hectic. You're not actually going to know what fire is on you and what is not. And especially in an urban environment, it's kind of hard to distinguish 
if you're the center for enemy fire or if it's the guy next to you. But you can easily find out by just testing the water, just walking a bit like out, seeing if you're taking fire, no, then okay, then we can move. But if you immediately see splashes next to you like this, then yeah, yeah you're the one under yeah. fire. And you should move back into cover and try mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. with the, your current position rather than risking. As long as you're not seeing splashes right next to you, you should assume that the fire is not necessarily directly on you until proven otherwise. These guys are really stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, there might be a bit more stupid. I mean, the yeah. AI has yeah. kind of a collective, um, a collective mind, so they do communicate with each other about our positions, which is why we might, see, they might appear smarter in the AOs because they actually communicate that our position is there and there, but um, you see a s isolated squad like that is pretty helpless because it doesn't have any information. So we could fire a good bit before they even started to realize where we were. And without intel they couldn't really keep track of us moving in to rush them. Because they were too busy with Netscape. So even in a four-man team you can basically leave one if you have like a light machine gun or a marksman lying behind in a good covered position you can basically light them up and keep them busy while the rest of the team moves in to actually strike. And he doesn't even need to be that accurate, he just needs to be the center of attention. In a normal AO and cave and liberation here, they normally should move around and move yeah. from position to position. And if you set them in Zeus, they don't do that. Uh, uh, what we uh, could try, if you could try to... Um, you, you know how to set patrols? Yeah. I don't know if we set them in the patrol pattern. Let's see. Around. Hill 181. Like a 50 meter patrol pattern around Hill 181. And then we can see if they... And one, we could probably one, huh. throw a huh. gas in the mix. Yeah, it's north of our current position. How many meters patrol? Uh, I think a 50 meter radius is enough, otherwise they're going to be a little too spread out and we we'll might have trouble finding them.
right back, guys. Alright, so I guess we'll move up there once Rolls is back. That's like one full squad in the gas? Yep. Two small, uh, three small squads and a gas. Alright, so now it's a substantially bigger force, so we shouldn't be surprised if they now react a lot faster. Because they have more angles and they can actually faster get intel on our position. So we should probably not be as careless this time, but we're gonna do the same uh, sort of beginning, where we uh, move in on like a patrol-esque thing, moving up in okay. a jog. Okay. But, okay, but now you know what the enemy enemies are. If you, if you go on a mission, do you know what uh, how many, many enemies you have against you? Or, uh, no, or is that no, no, some, some sort of you intel, you know how many they are? You would, uh, hopefully, by the uh, assistance of, like, uh, intelligence and reconnaissance aircraft, drones, you would have some sort of idea of relative troop size and assets, that being armor, cars, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. as well as stationary emplacements, but you will never know 100% what kind of force and the exact locations without real-time uh, surveillance, yeah. which most yeah. countries don't have in their militaries. Like, nobody has drone support 24-7. So you're usually working off not fresh intel. Okay. But okay. you have a certain idea of where, like the general area, and yeah, relative yeah. size, yeah. and that's okay. what you have to work okay. with. But yeah, you never know, so like, when we get the uh, captured messages that we ha are actually successful, obviously you don't get that in real life, you never know that you're 100% no. no. safe in a war situation. Oh, well, I'll try to get them, uh, rid of that, but... Uh, yeah, no, it, at the doesn't it doesn't matter because the scripts aren't set like that. Uh, I mean, Antistasi tries to mimic it, where uh, you get, uh, like, counterattacks and patrols and everything to mimic the sense that you're never actually truly safe. So even if you have just captured like a factory or something, you still have to have a 360 perimeter to uh, actually maintain your own security. Yeah, but yesterday when we were attacked from the south, when you mentioned before that position, uh, yeah, uh, in the past uh, maps we should see it uh, the, when the wet squares uh, appear were appearing. Now we didn't see it, so that was quite. No, uh, Fine. Yeah, it was pretty nice. It uh, was a good mimic of... I mean, I think the fact that they started firing on us before we landed actually gave us an advantage of knowing that we were under attack. Yeah, if true, they had... Uh, in a real-life scenario, you probably wouldn't have done that. You would have waited until the chopper had 
Bandit. drop the infantry Bandit. off unless you were under direct uh, orders to take out the helicopter as well and then moved into a better position and then basically bum rushed us as we were planning our attack on their harbor. So we're just going to move up now. We have a bit more of a challenge. We can't actually see the enemy in this forest from as far away. But the same rules apply. Once we actually get eyes on the enemies, we're going to open fire and not necessarily accurate, but in their general direction to try to get their attention. And then once they fire back at us, we're going to try to do the cover to cover maneuver and push forward. Uh, let me know if you need stamina breaks and stuff, by the way. Okay. Now we're moving out into a pretty open area. That is not considered what I would consider like strategically advantageous and there we are under fire immediately. Yeah. So yeah. find some cover and start listening to if there is any fire. You see the fire immediately stop once we were in cover. They can't see us anymore. So now I'm going to pop my head up and actually cover you guys, and I want you to try to move. I'm going to try to draw some fire. But still, they aren't actually firing back, because they still don't know. And you guys aren't taking fire either. So now, if you set up positions, uh, find some decent cover, and then one of you guys try to draw attention to you and I will try to move up. Just let me know when you're in position and try and when you're gonna start doing cover fire. Covering fire now. Cover that movement. Okay, so now they have located one of you. I don't know if you can tell which one of you is actually under fire, based on impact. I think it's not Scott. No. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's me. Alright. Well then, uh, Rolls has the attention. So, Netscape, you might be able to move up a bit further. Copy. Okay, I'm gonna try to do some covering fire now. Okay, I still will, don't see them. I will move. Reloading. And you see there's not a whole lot of fire in the air and nobody's actually no. taking fire, so no. we can safely move all of us until we start taking fire again. Once we start taking fire, uh, everybody gets to cover, and one guy tries to draw all the attention to him by making a goddamn ruckus. That's like the point. You try to keep one guy in the center of attention while the rest of the guys, of course, take pop shots, you have one guy making an absolute, being like a one-man band, entertaining the entire enemy squad. Shots. Taking cover, no Y zone. Yeah, I'm hit. hit. Rolf is taking heavy fire right now. Over. There's the gas. Yeah, there's the gas. Enemies in front of me, and now out of ammo. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
Okay, so even now the gas is focusing on me. Uh, I don't know, Rolf, are you still up? Yeah, or? I'm up, I'm up. Rolling attention. Yeah, see it stopped again. The Moving a little bit forward. And now I think we have defeated one of the three fire teams. So that means that there's still two out there, and that's something that we wouldn't know um, in like a real scenario. Of course, we would have the bar to go off to tell us that there was still a heavy enemy presence. But at this point, it seems pretty safe, right? There's no firing going on. We can move pretty freely around without taking fire. So what we want to do then is try to move as a team, a uh, fairly tight formation, and try to locate, like probe, where is the enemy at, and actually try to get back into contact, and try to figure out where the rest of the enemies are. And of course, hills like these are pretty bad. If you move up to my position. Um, because now we're going to be in full view, most likely, of anyone. Because we're now at the highest point of the battlefield. Which means that everyone can see us, yeah. but we can't necessarily... It's impossible for us to keep track of every possible angle that they could be shooting us from. So positions like these are basically to avoid, uh, for the most part. Especially in close quarters like okay. these, where we are basically at 300 meters max range Skyline. which means that the enemy Skyline. is going to be yeah they're going to be fairly accurate and even we're going to be skylining that way to the north but we're also going to expose ourselves being on the highest po point to the east and to the south uh, the only thing is the west where we have some cover so we're basically at the worst mm -hmm. possible point on the battlefield. Everything up here is going to be visible to everyone. So I think I spotted... Yeah, there's a few guys to the east now. So we're going to try to get their attention. Should I be, should be should watching be? that direction or the other one? The other direction. Oh, there's a... No, oh, no. There's a yeah, they shot me down. Yeah, oh. attention is on me. Or was on me. <laughs> nice one, that's good. All right. So we have a man down, and it's basically just uh... ah, insta, oh. insta kill. What the hell? That's I'm gonna TP you if you're ready. Yeah, I'm at mobile respawn. No! <laughs> what the fuck? I was just road killed by the um, gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, as I was uh, saying, uh, when someone goes down like that, it's basically the basic routine of pop smoke in the direction of the attack direction. but also it doesn't it's not going to help the medic or the guy going for the revive or the guy that's down to sit behind the smoke if you're not doing the reviving so for everyone else the point is oh, basically fuck. to try oh, to counter nice that's good like everyone focuses their fire and tries to and now it's pretty easy because we're out in the open fields. But in yeah. a uh, urban yeah. environment, you really have to also use your sense of sound. So when 
you hear fire, a lot of fire going on, like that, then you have to actually try to locate like where is that my guys firing? Is that the enemy guys firing? And that's gonna take some getting used to to actually notice the difference between an AK, which I'm using the enemy AK, so my firing sound is gonna be equal mm -hmm. to the enemies. But you can hear something like Netsky's M4 if you try to fire that a couple of times. If you have any ammo left. It's a pretty distinctive sound from the AK. So to actually try to locate, okay, where are my guys? Where are they taking fire from? Where do I have to move in order to be able to support my team? And did someone go down on the street corner, say to my right? which will put me on the same street where the battle is going. Maybe that's not the best idea to go to that exact street corner. Maybe move back or up a block to try to flank. But to try to um, also make individual like assessment of the situation, not necessarily sit around on your street corner and wait for people to tell you exactly where the action is, but to try to locate it yourself in order to maximize efficiency, because for all you know, those guys are, the guys that are under fire do not have time to explain they're fighting for their lives, so that I think can also help us a lot if um, we really try to individually try to locate and uh, yeah, understand the uh, battle that's going on or what is happening around us. So that's also something that I noticed, not a lot, but it happens that people get stuck in positions waiting for intel rather than trying to acquire them, acquire it themselves. And sometimes that is a valid tactic, especially like in uh, that town of La Riviere. Uh, it's probably best in situations that are so chaotic to so try to stay put, especially if you are a couple of guys and there's fire going on all around you and someone goes down or are under fire to so stay put and try to uh, make a proper plan of attack or mm -hmm. flanking maneuver or something to not just rush to someone's aid but to actually um, take your time but otherwise in like smaller villages and when uh, some part of the squad is coming under attack to try to actually make um, like um, acquire your own intel on what's going on if that makes any sense Yeah, but uh, if he, someone goes down soon, but the the prior, uh, priority change for from the cap capturing the objective, then uh, to yeah, the, uh, um, revive him your teammate. Yeah, it should, and um, the same goes for like if we're attacking an objective and we are kind of on a wide front, say we and another team were down at the small yellow circle to our west and they went into contact then the priority would be to actually move to a position to support them and actually help them repel or defeat their attackers so that would most likely mean either moving around on our north or try to regroup okay. them on the okay. south depending on what the situation is how close their attackers are, what is attacking them, because obviously if they are being hammered by a tank, we do not want to add to those issues by going down and joining them. Question. Basically in a bomb. Uh, we, have a, we have a gas uh, round, spotted us. Actually a gas like that, uh, not it's not armed with a gunner now, but does it give intel to other troops about our position? Um, I don't think it gives intel beyond like to its squad so right now if that is a solo that's just how armor works so if it's just a single entity it's not gonna give any intel to other squads in the area 
Let's say if it was a single rifleman that had been separated from his squad and was running across the field there and spotted us, then he would uh, transmit that intel to the rest of his squad. Oh yeah, would he? Yeah. So would he? yeah, so if you see like, that's what happens a lot in uh, when we're in towns and stuff. You have like a single rifleman out in the open, and he spots us, and you get like a lot of people coming out of buildings and moving to his position because, or, or they start moving around a lot more because he's actually saying enemy rifleman 300 meters northeast yeah okay and that's actually coded so that that means for the enemy AI move there and they get like most likely from their squad lead then the AI squad lead to attack us so then they go from a well I guess just defensive posture where they're just on the lookout to actually a counter attack where they actually get like sort of a search and destroy mission and they get our last known position so when we attack a town they basically get an attack order on us to counter attack which is why you see like uh, when we land with a chopper at one of the OPs or something you see you can see like the gases coming towards us and that's actually an attack order being executed to counterattack our presence in the area mm -hmm. and it's the same with the infantry but they of course move slower so it's not as obvious Right. Yeah, very useful. Should be. Should we only killed one squad. Yeah, we only killed one squad. There was one to the east, but it pro probably moved more to the northeast or even north at this point. So again, I would not go down this hill if I could help it, just because mm -hmm. we're going to be very exposed to the northern front. I would probably flank either west or up east into the woods. Uh, I think now we're gonna head west and see if we can get down into that valley or link up with that valley that goes on the other side of this little hill or ridge line. Just to try to, because you would want to try to maintain sort of a um, balance between uh, the area that you have visual control over and situational awareness and your exposure so that we can actually keep control over the angles that we are being or potentially could be attacked from so in here that would mean we are likely to be attacked from south bearing uh, yeah say 170 to maybe 130 and 40 to say zero and as long as we can keep control of that and uh, have <coughs> a lookout in both those areas we can basically control this area so this is a pretty good position to be in with some decent cover as well but up on that hill you basically have a 360 exposure and with four guys that's 90 degrees or now we're three guys so there's even more there, it becomes a lot of degrees of uh, cover for three guys yeah I make a lot of area I make, to cover. I make that mistake often I always go to the highest point do that a lot yeah yeah, yeah. and it's not just like angles on the compass because obviously it's three-dimensional so you also have the vertical so it becomes a huge area that you have to cover 
and it becomes impossible to keep track of it all. Yeah. Which is why areas like these, like choke points, where you have some cover and not too many angles that the enemy can shoot you from, is pretty advantageous. So I guess we can move a bit north now and see if we can locate one of the other squads. Oh, close. Right, so now it's just return fire and try to just suppress the shit out of them. And then you can probably use stuff like automatic fire if the recoil isn't too bad. If it is really bad on the weapon, then you would probably be more effective with the single fire. But don't underestimate the automatic fire, especially in situations like these where you have enemies really close because there is actually a suppression mechanic in game that is mm -hmm. trying to mimic real life where the enemy might just turn around and try to run away to a better position because they are taking so much fire. But it's kind of a 50-50. How, how many? Uh, four I think. Because uh, obviously when you're under fire, it's basically a 50-50 between fight or uh, flight, or freeze. Uh, the freeze isn't that accurate for, or it's not being simulated by the AI. They're basically either fight or flight. So either when you turn a corner and see someone 50 meters ahead of you, they will either A, run, try to run into cover, or B, start firing at you directly. But you can make the... Um, chances better by opening full automatic fire mm -hmm. because that will also mess up the enemy's aim uh, that's a 20 round yeah I think even with your marksman rifle rolls I would probably do automatic fire but I would probably swap to your uh, backup red dot up top because mm -hmm. it gives better recoil control it's really hard to I have, keep. I have, I have some trouble that uh, I need to be reloading too much. How many magazines are you with you? Have you with you? Seven. I think uh, I have seven a uh, I have eight in my vest plus four backups. You mean how many magazines? Yeah, how many are you carrying, Netscap? I have six. Six, six in my vest. Round. Carry around. That's yeah. not enough for me. I, I uh... yeah. Yeah, I have the same uh, same issue. Well, yeah. normally I use the SPMG, so yeah. Many times enough. I uh, have out uh, I'm out of ammo. I have yeah. it a lot. I, I have it a lot. I usually you can pick run up with from enemies, aren't you? aren't you? Yeah, I can use the same ammunition as enemies, so I don't really have that problem, at least not right now. But, um, I mean, you can do really well with uh, just single, single fire as well, and it will usually be more accurate, but the problem is that or you have to have a really high reaction time. Say if I was yeah. turning a corner now from north to direct east and I spot an enemy, you have to put enough fire into that him. Single so fire. That he definitely, fire. yeah. So he definitely has to go down. If I do automatic, it's it's the recoil is a bit too heavy. Yeah, yeah, the M4s are pretty terrible. That is um, the SIG is I think that's the stable. best one I have. The M8, MK8, uh, for recoil. Yeah, the RHS um, M4s are pretty bad recoil-wise, so you might be better off. But the point is to just uh, not save ammo in situations like that. That's not when you're going to yeah. conserve ammo. Yeah. You just need to put yeah. as many bullets as possible 
uh, the enemy's way to try to win that engagement. And the same, uh, like, now that we're out in the open on a patrol like that, it's just for the entire team to open up. Everyone who has eyes should just really pump as much ammunition as they can that way, or on the enemy, in order to try to win that engagement as fast as possible and force whoever isn't under direct fire to fall back into cover and hopefully you can then beat them relatively fast. But the first basically barrage of fire usually determines which side has to fall back and how many uh, units are being killed in the first barrage. Because obviously if two of our guys go down and say like a PKM gunner keeps opening up and we can't take him out early on that's going to be a problem because it's going to force everyone else to either fall back or into cover and we lose our advantage pretty fast. It also gives the enemy time to flank move up and secure their positions. That's mm -hmm. not as uh, relevant when we're in CQB because the enemy is already fortified, but the same rule applies. Like, the faster we can defeat the enemies that uh, we encounter, the faster or the l less likely it is that one of us are going to go down because obviously they're going to get off less bullets before uh, they go down. Uh, but if you're out of ammo, Netscape, you can take this AK, it still has a lot of ammo and I can pick up an enemy. No, I have four, four left. Oh, all right. Alright, so now we have a pretty decent, this is a decent descent because it has some cover, at least foliage and a few rocks. So I would consider this one better than moving down that main hill. I didn't actually take a look, but just from uh, what this looks like I would say this looks better. Also, we could def probably assume that the last squad is somewhere to our east, but instead of going back up the hill, we're going to try to move up the valley instead. Try to minimize our exposure and the angles. Well. Stamina break. Yep. Okay, I'm good to go. Alright, if um... I don't know, Nescap, do you want to take lead heading east? Okay. It's basically up this valley. Wanna be so close to the rock shots. The rock yep, shots. and now uh, we're under fire. Netscap is returning fire, taking the attention, so we can probably move up. Still not taking fire, got eyes on, and now I can engage. Got eyes on. Now I'm taking a lot of fire. Move up. won that. That was pretty good. That was really good actually. 
Yeah. But you see, we keep on top of the engagement by moving forward and always keeping fire on the enemy. And being very aggressive. Um, as we were pushing forward, we were keeping fire on the enemy and covering each other as we move forward and actually paying attention to who has uh, the ball or the enemy's mm -hmm. attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was when good. Yeah, that was immediately good. Yeah. giving uh, fire, returning fire. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you don't see them, just returning fire where you think it's coming from, or come from. Yeah, it was really good that you returned the fire because you were the one that initially took fire, and that makes sure that uh, you keep the enemy's attention, which yeah. allowed mean rolls yeah. to move up, basically unimpaled until or unobstructed nice and nice. get eyes on and then we could take the uh, attention so that was really good um, yeah. I like that and Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> nobody's really uh, I don't know if you guys felt um, like it was risky I don't know I felt like we had pretty good control over the situation uh, in, in the moment I thought on, I was returning fire, but I didn't see him, but I thought he was on that position. I didn't know if I hit him or not, but yeah, we killed them all four. Yeah, I, I wasn't so, actually yeah, yeah, yeah. aiming at them. I was, yeah, drawing at I didn't them. see them. I was just shooting at them. I didn't, and didn't, uh, yeah. No, but that's, um, that's uh, suppressing fire. You don't necessarily yeah. have to know the exact position. Yeah. You just need to know approximately where the enemy fire is coming from and then returning fire on that position. And then, yeah. even though you were doing that, meanwhile, Rolls, I guess you were moving up uh, pretty close behind me. And our job then, while you are returning fire, is to move up and try to actually get eyes on and actually put in those accurate shots to uh, relieve you. And then once, mm -hmm. uh, say, when I started taking uh, heavy fire, uh, then I swapped over to automatic and started doing more of a suppressing. I wasn't too worried about accuracy because I saw that you guys were moving up to finish them off. Uh, you can use whatever Gerald, I think. Uh, So yeah, I think that was really good. Yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. um, the attack can come to a grinding fucking halt if someone goes down. Um, yeah. But it doesn't necessarily have to. I mean, we can keep the attack going, uh, partly because we have uh, a timer that's pretty generous. And we usually operate with more people. So if one guy goes down, um, we should definitely, uh, everyone should definitely be using their GPS's. I think most people are right now. But to actually pay attention to, okay, who just went down and am I the closest person yeah. to him? Uh, if so, then basically take any pop of smoke and then, or like getting cover and pop of smoke and try to, uh, basically as fast as possible move to that person because obviously they what I see a lot is that they make a big fuss naturally about being down and needing a medic but that puts doubt into everyone or not necessarily doubt but like uh, should I be moving forward or should I be helping that guy is someone else helping that guy? And that's communication as well that we can definitely do better. But, uh, yeah, basically try to get those people up as fast as possible to maintain confidence in the attack. Because that's like a subconscious thing, or subconscious thing, that happens when people start going down. You actually lose morale or, like, faith in the yeah. attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. So trying to keep as many people up 
uh, as possible and trying to get them back up as fast as possible is actually important for the uh, attack to be successful. And to keep rolling forward. But yeah, this was uh, really good. Cool. So uh, I guess we have neutralized everything now, yeah? Yeah, everything is dead. Everything is dead. So that kind of proved my the point that I wanted to make with this. In yeah, very nice. Sort of, I don't know, what do yeah, you want to call it? Nice. Class? <laughs>